season one kind of trial by fire and I didn't know anything and now I know some more things. And I like looked at my check for the first time and I'm like, bro, I actually got money. <laughs> so the first season we shot on GH5 Lumix and then just bought really expensive anamorphic lenses, which is how you get a lot of like the stark wides. Very stoked, very excited. I was in Vancouver and just yelling in my- Three years apart in terms of production schedule, right? So we would all like look different and there's like already new technologies within those three years. So I think, I think establishing the own universe. Welcome to Amigos PC. If you were looking for a podcast with high standards and an appreciation for the finer things in life, like water polo, ballet, equestrian riding, cricket, and trips to the countryside, uh, you're in the wrong place. If you're looking for a podcast that celebrates drinking, random thoughts, wacky conspiracies, memes, crypto, cinema, and a lot of other things that don't really make any sense, then you're in the right place. This is Amigos PC, and here are your hosts, Scott and Mark. Hey, you! Yeah, you! You're hearing this for a reason. You haven't subscribed to the Amigos membership on Supercash yet. Uh, for as little as $5, you can get access to our feed with no ads and exclusive membership discounts and merch. Jump up to our $30 tier and get everything plus direct access to us via our Discord channel, Live Amigo AMAs, quarterly giveaways, and crypto merch for a dollar a day or less. The Amigos back at it again. Today we have uh, two guests with one of their shows that just recently launched season, or they just wrapped up season two, I should say, Abracadavers, which we're going to get into in this episode. We have Griffin Cork and Anayat Amadi, right? Yeah, that's correct. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> All Whoa. right. All right, we're done. That's a wrap. First time. For, first time. Yeah. I usually put your name, so I appreciate uh, your entertaining me and trying to get it right. Hey, uh, that's all we needed. And thank you yes. so much for having us on the podcast. We'll uh, talk Thanks, to you guys. Later. <laughs> See you next time. That was all. That was all. Yeah. Quickest podcast ever. That was it. <laughs> so if you guys could start with you, Griffin, just give us a little bit of insight of your world. You know what you got going on before we got on the air. It sounds like you're you're stacked, as it was said. <laughs> uh, with just what's going on in your, in uh, the movie world right now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I started acting about a decade ago. My first my first union gig was like grade five, I think. Oh, wow. I was opposite Matthew Perry in the Ron Clark story, who, if you don't know him, plays Chandler on Friends. That's kind of my big claim to fame, and I don't tell anybody <laughs> too much about that movie because I have <laughs> vanilla ice lines in the side of my head and a rat tail. So it's something that I don't showcase often. And so I kind of was working kind of since then. I did a little bit of theater, a little bit of voice work, a little bit of acting, and then like five or six years ago, I got asked to do, this was like, yeah, oh man, no, no, six years ago, 2016, we did the first $10,000 pilot of Abracadavers, and it was a uh, more 10-minute web series format back then, and sometimes as an actor, you get on set and you do your bit and you get your check and you leave and like you forget about it because you have to move on to the next thing. You gotta push stuff out of your brain. But Abracadabra's kind of stuck with me. Like it was in my brain. I was like, oh, this could be something really cool. Like the design's really cool. I had a great time. So I kind of was just like pestering <laughs> the producers of it. And I was like, so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna take it to like some festivals? And like, like can, I, can we get the first season funded? What's happening? We have this pretty sweet pilot. I was like, fine, why don't you just come help? And I went, okay. So that's how I got into producing. I <laughs> did season one kind of trial by fire, and I didn't know anything, and now I know some more things. So uh, that's that's my uh, that's my story. And I, if you could just give us a little bit of insight on you too. Okay, for sure. So for me, I got into acting in middle school as like this little kid trying to do a th like you know join theater. You know, when you when you're little, you don't know what you're doing. I was just there, just like reading lines, monotone. Like I was reading a book, pretty much at that point. <laughs> so that was pretty much the first time I actually did like theater grade seven, eight. I think a little bit nine, and then I just focused up on school. Kind of, it was in the back of my mind, 
and I didn't take it like I was 18 and I finished my first semester at SAIT, I think, and I was like, no, I want to act. Screw everything else. I'm I didn't know you went to SAIT. I went to SAIT for a semester. For oh, one sick. semester. Yeah, I think either I was upgrading or taking a two year program, but I was like, I want to act. And from then, I started training Calgary Actor Studio, Company of Rogues in Calgary, and then moved out to like moved out to Vancouver after like a couple of years of training in Calgary. I think I was 21, 18 to 21. I was in Calgary just training, and then when I came here, I was like, you know what? I'm ready to take the next step. And then I moved here, focused up, and just last last summer, thanks to that man over there, Griffin Cork, and the rest of the Abercadavers team, I got my like first ever major role as like getting paid. And I like looked at my check for the first time, and I'm like. Bro, I actually got money <laughs> for some. Like, I actually got paid for a role. Where, okay, where, I can afford food. Where, where'd you frame it at? And is it in the back over there somewhere? Uh, I still have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it's right. here with me. Nice. I still what have is that, that Mr. Crab's first dollar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, I, remember, I have it in a book. Do you remember your what are your first? Do you remember your junior high? Like, what roles you played in junior high? I have one that'll never leave my brain. Do you remember any? <laughs> I don't, rem nah, I don't, I'm pretty sure I did a rendition of Shakespeare, but I don't remember what character I was or much of it, oh but my. I didn't really. Which play? Uh, tell me which play. Mm -hmm. Which play? Bro, oh, it's actually so I was, was I was a heavy? tree extra. Nah, I wasn't. I was. <laughs> right. So. I was a tree extra. Yeah. I think it was one of the, I think. <laughs> this is, this is painful. I think it's, it was Hamlet. We're, we're, we're hijacking the show. We're just turning it into a conversation. That, no, boys. that's fine. That's what. That's what. That's, yeah, we're just that's literally about, the foundation we, of our show. About, we haven't talked about middle school or anything, so this is new. Okay, but we, what about what about your like? Oh man, my drama teacher. <laughs> my drama teacher was a very frustrated man named Mr. Riley, and he's frustrated because he didn't want to teach drama. He likes French and he likes art, and that's it. And they were like, "Oh, art, okay." You like drama, and you're French. And he goes, no, that's not really the same thing. So he oh, he would, and he also didn't want to deal with like getting rights to shows. So he wrote kind of a rendition of Snow White. No, no, sorry, the one I'm thinking of is Robin Hood. And he, he wrote it, I would say, a little insensitively. And it was called Robin in the Hood. Oh. Um, and I played Friar oh. Tuck, and I was a pimp. So I was in grade seven. And I came on stage in a oh big furry hat and a fur coat, see this. and two grade nine girls in my arm, and they kissed oh me on the God. cheek and left stage. And I was like, "Oh, this is awesome! I get to walk out with two pretty grade nine girls." And looking back, I went, "I can't do that! Oh my God!" And then I had a staff <laughs> fight with Robin Hood. That was wow. my wow. That's a wow. Okay. I think it should. I think <laughs> that's how it should have always been, been, been written. <laughs> exactly oh, right. Quaking yeah. in his grave. <laughs> I think I've turned that into a movie yeah. now. Right. <laughs> that's that's actually they're very hilarious. And, and you know, having a show kind of like ours where it is just friends talking, it, this is the kind of things that come out. Like, mm. th and I love these kind of things uh, with you guys going back your uh, com camaraderie and just kind of going into a story that maybe not a lot of people have heard of you playing a pimp. <laughs> In Robin Hood. I don't think I don't think I've ever told that story anywhere. My parents know and obviously the school knows. Nice. I don't know I don't know that I've ever said that. It's not a good look. I'm sure there's photos. Or a video. There's gotta be a VHS there. somewhere. <laughs> I'll burn it. I'll I'll explode it if I find it. <laughs> that awesome. is awesome. Well, well one one thing I, I did want to talk with you, Griffin, on is uh so we got to watch one of your other projects that you did broken. And this, so we, we got to talk to a couple of your other uh, co-hosts, or, or not co-hosts, co-actors in, in, the, in the movie and everything like that. And I just wanted to touch on it just a little bit. That, it, that was a very unique experience when it came to a movie, the, just the dynamic, it, like a, a thriller in, in its, you know, it, mm -hmm. it investigative thriller, I guess you could say. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I, it, it, it is interesting. It's yeah, it, it's a one of my favorite types of theater to watch is mystery theater. There's a company here in Calgary, Vertigo Theater, that just handles mystery theater, and they're my favorite company in town. Like I'm a big, I love Agatha Christie and like all the work they do. And 
I always have conversations about people like when you when there's a crime on stage or a crime in a movie, do you want to see the crime and then watch the detective figure it out? Or do you want to figure it out along with the detective? Like what is more interesting to an audience? And there's a whole there's there's two sides of that debate, right? So yeah. in, in something like the story of Broken, you will point at my character, Brian, if you just met him at the end of the movie and go, hmm, bad dude, evil guy, uh-uh. And I love stories like that where you kind of watch the positions that he'd been put in, you know, mostly his fault, but like some of the choices that he had to make. And there's, it's always, there's like two or three moments where you could, you could turn to the person you're watching with and go, hmm, but what would you do though? Like what, what's... What would you actually? Th <laughs> it's like every part uh, question I got asked at every house party. But like, what would you do? What would you actually do? <laughs> no, but that's how it came off in in the actual. It's like okay, like the things that he's doing seems very realistic. Like this could actually happen. Him, you know, having the meltdown or, or an, an accident an, beyond another accident happening and just things kind of escalating slowly out of control in a situation that you've never really been into, right? Mm. Yeah, and I think I think that's something that everyone can relate to, right? Like, obviously not in the same, yeah. like, proportion or specifics that Brian had to deal with, but, like, a, a decision where no outcome is perfect, like, there's, there might not be a good outcome or, or at least not a clear, easy one, that, that on some scale I think everyone gets. Everyone's kind of had that, like, all all of a sudden yeah. weight on chest of like Whoa, like what do you do here yeah i completely agree i also like the fact of like not following it entirely like until the very end where i'm like oh wait there's like not to give spoiler alert, no, you have like, to you have to give spoiler alert. Thing, and there's a switch off like and you're like okay like now this all makes sense right because like you were saying earlier, like, who wants to follow the detective? And in this case, we were following the detective trying to figure this out, what was really happening, because it didn't seem like you guys were a bad group, right? Mm -hmm. You're just friends hanging out on a drive until the story really unfolded. Yeah. I, I, I really like the way Laura played her cop character in that sense, is I think she brought a lot yeah. of, like, especially in the setting of the film, she brought a lot of, like, the kind of, like, simple small-town cop of, like, the sometimes the easiest answer is, like, the right answer. Like, that, like, mm. there was there was the perfect mix of, like, awareness that she did and also just, like, well, I have a hunch, it's this. And then it was, you know what I mean? Like, just an excellent yeah. blend of, like, small town sheriff. Yeah, I agree. In, in just the dynamic, and I was kind of actually explaining this to her, like, my thought behind, like, it seems like a detective would actually be doing this, like, reimagining this in their head, replaying it, and, but we just got to see it in, like, a third person of her actually, you know, replaying it in her head. Yes, that makes sense. totally. And I and I love, I, I'm such a, I, man, <laughs> the, the, the Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law, I love those sequences. Oh, my God. I, I, I people rip on this movie so much, but when movie. he starts, oh, like, yeah. it's the one where the, where the, I don't know, Cossack assassin drops into fortune teller's room and the whole thing is about like making breakfast and he's like scramble eggs and he like hits him in the nuts and like, but like that kind of like genius context applied to like the steps yeah. of killing a person. Oh, it's cool. It's cool, man. <laughs> Movies are cool. So how, how does, how does it feel <laughs> that you're on the side, both of you guys, that you're actually in them? Like now that you're, you know, that you're obviously a fan of film. You're doing them. What is it like now that you've, in a sense, probably have met your dream being in them? What is that like every day? And I, you go first. And I just got paid. Oh, okay. So, I'm going to say one of the main reasons I like I got into acting as well is like in real life, there's moments in real life where it's like, you know, it's boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, not to knock on no, real every, life. Every day. You know, keep going. Amazing, keep but... going. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Knock yeah. on real life. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck real life. <laughs> Screw real life. <laughs> No, it's like, uh, in what other context am I going to be able to play someone that is not me? Mm. Someone completely True. different to understand another person and not like go into it just judging them. Like, you know, when you play a character, it's like you go into it trying to understand them and try to make like a story come out of it. And like no other <laughs> profession or very little, like very few professions allow you to do that. And like, that's one of the main reasons I love doing this. 
like a dream come true. And there's days when I'm like on set and I'm doing it for free, but I love the story and I'm like, it's worth it. Right, right. I mean, you could be a crazy person at Starbucks, just every day is different if you wanted to be, right? Like, <laughs> like uh, no, you know, today and it's going to be that guy. Yeah. yeah. Today I'm Batman. Technically true. I'm Batman yeah. at, at Starbucks. <laughs> what about you, Griffin? Technically it's, true, uh, you'll get, you'll get stared. Hey, but, but you can do it. <laughs> wear, wear the mask. Right. Yeah. I I was I was uh, I was on set this weekend and one of the producers was like yeah a, a bad day on set is better for me than like a a good day in an accountant's office and not to knock accountants but I wouldn't be good yeah. at that yeah. you know what I mean like that's so not for me and I wouldn't be good at it so it's it is an interesting I huh, I'm good at like premieres or like. ADR, where I know that I can't change anything about what I'm seeing, but if like if I'm on set and someone's like, "Hey man, do you want to watch what you just did?" I'll go, "No," because I'll <laughs> I'll I'll watch it, and I bet it. I I think every actor has this a little bit. I'll watch it and then see all of the habits that I do with my face, like I that only I know because I've watched myself so much, and I'll go, mm -mm, "I want to do that again." Like I'll always, I'm like, I can do it better. Let me give me one more. I can do it better. And that's not productive, especially when you're a producer on the project. Because if you go over, it costs more yeah. grand. But I do, a, I do a lot of nose acting. Like, like I, a lot of like not nostril <laughs> stuff. I hate it, but I do it all the time. So I never watch, I never watch on set. So seeing it, you know, I, I need to start watching. You gotta watch the little to things. See if I can you gotta watch the little things. Like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's. Yeah, I, I. Well, you know, every so, every, every person I mean, has their own critique, right? So you're gonna take what you see, and you're gonna be like, oh no, like, not yeah, not great there. I'm doing something like the nose thing, right? So there, you're always gonna be that person, yeah, to yourself well, for the most part, especially in in the in the arts, to make yourself better or try to make yourself better, right? So yeah it, it is tough it is tough because i think quality is applied so subject subjectively right and you will always be you're totally correct scott you'll always be your your worst critic because you know yourself best but there's a few times and it's the most satisfying thing is a few times where you can watch something it doesn't i would say it happens for maybe maybe like one out of every six times <laughs> it's good. i'll it's watch good them and go oh i did that pretty good <laughs> like just like i think i was pretty good in that scene and that doesn't happen often but that is a different kind of high than I don't know my my junior high yeah, school yeah, pinnacle course sells. I mean that's that's <laughs> where the bar set high, right? That's the that's the, that's the pinnacle, yeah, right there. The, the two ni the ninth graders, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. come on, doesn't get better than that. They were. I peaked that. Yeah, I peaked. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean they you were so it. cool. You hit it right there. It was so cool to walk on stage and say, "Oh my god." <laughs> So, was it Lady of the well, Night with, 1 and Lady of the Night 2? Is that what their roles were? Or, no, dude, same time. They, they came out no, the I know, but what was, the, what, was the, the, what was their title? Or did they even have one? Was it Lady of oh, the Night 1? Stage, I actually don't. I can't. Yeah, they would have to be something yeah, very yeah. careful in yeah. the junior high I'm just cast curious. list. Sorry. <laughs> I don't remember. So with, with uh, Amber... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Let me off there, Scott. Thanks. With Abracadabras, first off, yes, I love the name. name. I, I like it's just like magical dead people for some reason just it pop me. And, and it, that's not what it's right. about, right? I mean, yes, yes but no. If we that didn't get far sense. enough, but you never know, right? There's still time. So, <laughs> right, yeah, right. It, seasons go on, you and all of a sudden there are magical dead yeah. people. Actually, no, oh, leave. oh, you Actually, said too much. That's We've really said too much. <laughs> we get too many details. Go back to post. Back to the editor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I would actually add a lot of voiceover. <laughs> no, but the unique scenario, right? In in, uh, don't get me with. Uh, I haven't like watched in all of it, right? We like I was telling you off there. We watched a few episodes uh, from the link that you gave us earlier, and uh, like the vibe. I'm like feeling the way that this was shot is like Napoleon Dynamite. That's uh, I'm not no, seeing I, like I the same thing. it's not like the comedy, but like I don't know if it's just like the camera you guys decided to use or like the angles. I'm not sure, but I just get this vibe that he's gonna pop out <laughs> Napoleon out of is. nowhere. Yeah, uh, him or Uncle. 
difficult. I don't know. It just, I don't, and it might be too. Also, like the, like in the first season, the van, oh, like yeah, the yeah, van yeah. really gives me a vibe the of Uncle that. Rico van. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I really like that stuck out. So, it's friends helping another friend, and, and in this case, a death had happened. I don't want to give too much of a, a, a spoilers for people who haven't seen sure. it, but. It almost comes off like it's Stand By Me. Like I don't, I don't know why. Like that just comes to mind. Like you know, friends on a journey, right? It maybe they they're not going to go see a dead body because that that the, all a dead body, body triggers this, them. right? But oh, yeah, maybe oh, you never know. In you fact, never know. Oh, I go. <laughs> said too much. Go said too much. Balls. Well, that that you being producer, right? You you produce you were able to produce some of this. So, where was the inspiration in choosing some like okay, like the camera shots? Like again, I really feel like that has that vibe of Napoleon Dynamite, just how it was shot. Absolutely, it's it's I, I what I hear people talk about the most, and in in like what I believe to be a, a large part of the reason of the success of the of the series is is twofold is the cinematography who that's Joseph Wright is our cinematographer and the production design and the first season that was Kenny Weaver and Rachel Hogan and then for season two they were joined by um, Marcel Bouchard and Mike Casper so that's that was our art team for the two seasons and I think I think that's why it triggers Napoleon Dynamite too because also Napoleon Dynamite's production design is fantastic oh, yeah. in that it they've they've and you know it's it's something i know very little about so you know you mentioned me producing it i didn't i didn't do any <laughs> of this it's more just like they we just brought on the right people they yeah. got a solid color palette and then they stuck to it so for like season one and there's elements of it in season two but it's yellow blue white and pastel pink and they, they had, and they made this like great lookbook of like what all those characters uh, all those colors invoke in people and like what they mean metaphorically and you know i understood some of it and some of it i didn't but then it kicked ass and it worked um and so yes it's what what it what i think that does that establishes a really solid brand for the show like you see a, an image of abracadabras and you know it's an abracadabras image without it having to be like a title or anything like the style of it is very yeah noticeable i think i've you know which i'm it's kind of me tooting my own horn of like we did a good job but it's the design of it <laughs> that is so solid well, yeah you gotta show pride sure, right? yeah, yeah oh my god we're on a press tour practically <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and then for the cinematography, Joe is what I would describe as one of maybe like the one of the last mad geniuses. Ooh, of film. I he is uh, he's brilliant. Does he does he come in? Does he come in with like a like a milk video. crate of just like cans and he dumps them out? And then like, all right, this <laughs> yeah. can he showed up. He showed up. And with this one, we're gonna do can we're gonna do these cans everywhere in the background. Is that what he does? <laughs> Yeah, he's can, gonna be everywhere in the puts background. Him in front of the camera, black and white. I see it. Yeah, I like it. He, but he, like his mind is just amazing. Like he, I, I, again, I was so I brought him on to direct the music video I was directing, and I was like, kind of want this, and I, and I don't have the lingo. I don't direct, and I was like, here's what I kind of want. He went, no problem, <laughs> and he runs somewhere. <laughs> like we're at like a river, and he goes into the trees somewhere, and I go. Okay, I guess like I don't I don't know where he is. I don't know if I'm in the shot. And I go, uh, action! And I'm like, run somewhere. And then it, it, he's he's perfectly like behind like some blade of grass, and he captures it like in like it's yeah. So the first season we shot on our, our GH5 Lumix, and then just bought really expensive anamorphic lenses, which is how you get a lot of like the stark wides. Uh, and then season two, we were able to actually cobble enough money to get an actual like I think Alexa is the camera that we shot. Uh, Amazon's everywhere. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we shot it on an Alexa and an OK Google two nice. camera setup. They're everywhere. Yeah, that, and, and you know it's uh, I think Joe and Kenny and Rachel and Morgan, who's the creator of the series, have been making stuff before I even joined them. So the synergy between the four of their brains is we're really fortunate to have is like sometimes the first day on a film shoot can be really really that's why you don't put any of the important scenes on the first day because the crew is like figuring each other mm. out cast will always be weird, yeah but the crew's got to get a synergy that's so, awesome yeah so they they work really well <laughs> anyway i could talk about how cool those people are forever someone shut me up <laughs> 
Well, and that's that. Well, that was just one piece of the vibe, right? And so the the second vibe that, like I was saying, I, I felt was, you know, it's a standby me. I almost feel like is like being portrayed. Mm. Yeah, it's I, I when when we originally got the funding, we shot it for eight ten minute episodes or like eight twelve fifty minute episodes. And then how we shot season two with Anayat and then the rest of the new cast and uh, how we edited season one is we put it more into like 22 minute episodes because we realized that that like sells better. And of course now like HBO Max has like their short form series and Netflix has like lessened their actual runtime of episodes. So like people are now accepting more short form content. But at the time it was like, yeah. no, you want a TV length. Um, but originally we kind of formatted the episodes of season one around the seven stages of grief. Because it is a lot about like yeah denial and acceptance and and it's it's something we really explore I think a lot more in season two like one of our one of the kind of main group from season one kind of turns into someone who needs a needs a kind of group to hang out with and that's kind of where Anaya's character gets introduced um, uh, and takes the character of Ali and kind of yeah it's you know. Chris is not as present in season two because season one was all about Chris. So season two is exploring kind of the lives and interests of like the four other groups. So Ooh. trying to make t what were tertiary characters not that anymore. So Naya, what, what's that like? Like, so you you get casted for season two of this, right? You already know that there's a backstory. So are you going back and like actually watching he, he, season right, one? No, he has to say yes uh, there, And Mark. then are, are, are you... Yeah, that's you right. better. I have a gun. You better say yes. yes. <laughs> the producer's here. Come on, Mark. Um, you can't set him up like that. Because... Well, basically, like the research. What, what what type of research are you doing to get into, involved in? You know, because uh, you're coming in on the second week. Say, say, say you've been I, watching I for weeks, but as they were filming. I <laughs> know. So you've been watching as they film. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but yeah, what I did kind of uh, figure out when I got that email, first of all, like I was like very stoked, very excited. I was in Vancouver and just yelling and my roommate kind of ran like ran into my room was like, what are you yelling at? I'm like, bro, I got a job. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, no, that is a but... plus. Now he's got rent. He's got rent. He's got rent plus. money. Yeah. <laughs> no, but then after that, I kind of, uh, what was it? I, I actually went to the Fantasy Network, and it was online, right? So I actually did watch all the episodes. I watched it over once, twice, okay. to get it in my brain. And then I think uh, shortly after, I got sent the script. And what I love about the script as well is like, the backstory I could completely come up with on my own. Like, you know, I, like it has to make sense to, like my character has to make sense for season one, coming into season two. But I was free to play with like pretty much the the writing and everything and like what I also love with this project is you know all our directors are amazing producers the cast and crew we had a lot of freedom to like pretty much pitch stuff too like when we were on set because uh, Ramon like I think he was directing a couple episodes he was always open to be like okay what do you think of this this and this like we could potentially change the blocking a little bit here and there so it was very yeah like working on Abracadabras was like very easy it wasn't like it wasn't we're strictly sticking with this and you got no say in anything <laughs> but mm. yeah mm -hmm. but for my character itself because when i broke down my character this is how i this is my power press of going into it pretty much ali like we take care of, we take ali and like you know she's going through a rough period in her life I don't know how much I can say. <laughs> yeah. No, we're doing good. We're doing good. I like it. You're we're doing, doing good. good. Okay. Stop. All right. So what happens in the end? I'm, I'm going <laughs> to mute it. I'm going to. No, I can't, but I don't, pretty much. I'm going to watch. So, but keep going. Keep going. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Just like that's, Griffin. Hold on, let me take my head to the... Keep right, going. Okay. Keep going. No, go, keep going. <laughs> no, but just like <laughs> Griffin said. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> pretty much, we take Ali, who's going through a rough period in her life, and we kind of give her like an escape and we actually like try and help her out as, a lot as well and when I was breaking down this character that's going through it because essentially if you watch the first season these guys are all misfits mm -hmm. pretty much they're outsiders looking in they just got their powers they don't know how to use it they're, they're you know so they're trying to figure out how to like fit in pretty much and I just broke down this character as in like, we're in, all in the same group. When these guys come to the camp, we're all pretty much in the same group. We don't know <laughs> shit. We don't know how to use our powers. We're learning. And, yeah, that's... 
that's pretty much how I like did it. I don't know how to end it off. No, that's good. And I don't want to no, say that's too good, much. No, that's good. That's good. I don't want that to was get good. Good about. What did you what did, <laughs> you, what did you take into the interview or or to get the role? Like what 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 did you manifest into your role that maybe got you the position? Except for maybe knowing Griffin. Ooh. Keep going. Go. I I, sh- I should say me and, me and I Didn't did I not know, that. Okay. know each other. Okay, good. Okay, books. good. All right. Yeah. yeah. So there's no nepotism. Oh. And go. <laughs> it's true. It, no, it, it was nice. merit alone. Merit alone. I will I will let <laughs> I will stand here let Anaya be berated. <laughs> oh my yes, god. Yes. Don't. Honestly, yeah. Thank you, y- thank yell. You. Nicely done. I'm gonna cry in in a minute. But go ahead. Go. <laughs> Oh, oh my god sorry sorry scott what was your question oh again, by the way? so what 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 did you manifest in yourself or what did you what did you do to, to get the character right in the not so much interview but the yes what to do get you the feel role. like you there did right to get the role oh okay that's actually a great question right pretty much uh i like that question i'm guess yeah i love that question a lot like whenever I like get a character, this is gonna sound so actory and cheesy. I try to find a way to make them as human as possible. <laughs> so uh, I think good. for my size, that's a, that's the size a, I had, a, it rela- was the first relatable. ever time. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to. I just want to make them real. Yeah, yeah. But the first, I, I got the size, and uh, this, this was the first time that uh, Norman introduces himself to like the group, pretty much with Ali, uh, with. Ali, well, Franco's character, and and Cor- and Corny's character. So we just all like are at a party meeting for the first time, and I just went to into it as in like, okay, moment before, how do you like introduce like well, if you're trying to make friends, you know, you go into it. How do you introduce yourself? I just pretty much kept it very simple, like trying to break it down. I didn't try and like you know do anything very like you know over the top. And even Ramon, when he like kind of talked to me, we were on set. He talked to me about. Cause he saw my self tape as well. He was like, "You just seem the most genuine out of everyone else," which I, is very high praise coming from a man like that. I was I don't know what the other actors were doing sending their self tapes, but I guess this is the <laughs> one time where keeping it simple kind of worked for me. <laughs> nice. Like, I think you told me one. I'm not gonna put that slide in there, but you know, just in case, I'm putting that slide in there. Yeah, cause I, you told me one of them looked like. Oh my god! I, I good thing I'm not. <laughs> but he told me that one of the actors who submitted for Norman kind of just looked like a serial, like acted like a serial killer, oh, and I'm like, nice. what? But I'm not like a serial, but he's like, you're the, you seem the most genuine out of everyone. So, all right, mm-hmm. I think that's eventually what got me. Nice. <laughs> Thank goodness, man. Mm-hmm. I'm, I want to start submitting tapes <laughs> just with a knife and just for for roles. <laughs> And see what happens. And just see what happens. Oh, oh my god. Ramon is Ramon is gonna kill me. I don't think that's what he said. I think I'm much No no no, just for other roles. No, no, not this project. Oh just going forward for other things for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I got you it. You got this. You don't look yes. like a serial yeah, killer. Thank you very much. We you're totally good. want you on set. Okay. Thank that's you. Actually, <laughs> totally want you on set. Actually a really nice pep talk, you guys. <laughs> They've been trying to say that for weeks to you. <laughs> So we did it. Yeah, for 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 them, for the for the oh, team, no. for the Except team. Where he was probably the scariest in yeah. his tape, and they're like, the "We got to give him an aud- audition, <laughs> <laughs> or he's gonna find us." Oh yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. So where would you? What kind of bushes do you hide in normally? So, <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm just, I'm taking oh, it back to. <laughs> good God. I know. Oh, Sorry, I took it there. Yeah. Really? To How bounce you off from of that? that a little bit. That's weird. Not at all, really. <laughs> yeah, I know. One question I did have, and I was really baffled on, so the time of like kind of when this was set, and it may, maybe like it's there isn't a time, right? Maybe there isn't, and and I can totally accept that. But everybody doesn't have a cell phone, but they did have a phone at, at least in one in the couple episodes that I watched, and. The, well, that was their that's, that that was their phone, but they all had a phone like that, and I'm I'm just I I got lost because somebody went to go buy something with a debit card, so I'm all like, what See, time? And that's why it's... frame are we in right now? Like I, I can accept the rotary phone. That wasn't a rotary totally phone. accept those. Like, and you guys playing them off as like the cell phone, but 
Then he goes to pay with a debit right. card where there's a tap and a thing, you know, like it was an outdated machine, but it, they made reference to things that you can do in today's mm. era. So I'm like, okay, I need more. That, uh, that's need where, more that's where it kind of Something, falls in that I'm not, I'm not sure, like complex, because when you watch that, you're like, what year is this? When we watched it, like it right. was, it was, <laughs> yes. it felt like it was super old, but it was like current and they were just out of the loop of maybe current things at the time. Have they ha have they heard of Apple yet? Please, <laughs> they're shooting on an Alexa. Yeah, they have yeah, to know. Yeah, they have an Alexa camera. All right, thanks, <laughs> Um Yeah, we've kept it a little nebulous, and I actually don't know where that originated. That that kind of came with Morgan and the production designers. Is I think they like the the retro look, but I also think establishing your own kind of universe or like quote unquote time period would make it one easy to like establish a brand but then two also like as you kind of progress like as we wrote season two season one and season two were like three years apart in terms of production schedule right so we would all like look different and there's like already new technologies within those three years so i think i think establishing the own universe and keeping it in that kind of like vague sense but i think we also have to be very careful around like I think that's, it's it's in the writing room. Like we have a whole team of writers, and I think they were very cautious to like not make any too many references of like like pop culture icons to again be like, wait a minute, what? Like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like they're not they're not going to be like, oh yeah. man, Kobe, and they're also not going to be like, I miss Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> you know, like it's it's <laughs> like this. I, I think they're very cautious in terms of their scope of that. So when you say upgrades, did it go yeah. from? From the corded phone to then a cordless phone. I haven't got to season two, so <laughs> we, kept, we did keep we did nice, keep the nice, rotor. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah, I can't wait no, to we see. Couldn't. Yeah, good. And again, that's something. I, this is something that I didn't know how to do until after <laughs> season one. Is they have a color for each of the characters, and that color is a motif that comes back in like all of our costumes. Whoa! Like, it's that kind of thinking that I just go. Whoa! Like I could, I could yeah, never no do production design. Oh my god! I, I like blue. <laughs> Everything's blue now. That's <laughs> that's, that's, that's me too. Yeah. Blue. What kind of sky do you want? Exactly. Blue. Yeah. You don't want a blue. moon or stars? Or, no, blue. Yeah, like blue. When I, I think the original concept of the show and and oh man, I don't know if I can say, but I'm going to anyway. And I, do you want to talk about what your power is? <gasps> oh. Okay, we'll do it. All right. Let's say let's let's say I don't know if this is allowed, but I'm gonna say oh, this. Wow. So let's say let's say only on this wow. interview. <laughs> okay. That's All right. Good. Sounds good. As long as you give me and the if, go if ahead. If you tell us after, right, if you tell us after, say, yeah. not do it. We we won't. If someone says, okay, so, yeah, All right. All right, shh. Let's know. go. Let's I'll... go. I like it. Middle okay. middle middle school right, middle school fun. Uh, let's go. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, Norman can copy anyone else's power, but he can only do about 5% <laughs> maximum. So That's awesome. I'm pretty much, <laughs> you know, I swear to God, I can't wait to see the final product because I'm thinking like in, po in post how it's going to look because there's this one scene we're all showcasing <laughs> our powers, right? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure like, I'm just going full force like, come help me, help me, boom, everything. And then I'm pretty sure it's just yeah, gonna nothing. be like yeah. the tiniest little water splash. Tiniest little, like, you know, lighter. It's gonna, like, other people can have flamethrowers in their hands. I'm just there with the lighter, <laughs> pretty much. So, that's yeah, awesome. That's me. I think, I, and the reason I bring it up is because I think that that's kind of the theme and the angle of it that we want to take with the show, right? Where there's all these, like, fantastical elements, but. It's they're not like the main crux of the plot, right? Like it, we didn't we didn't want it to be like a chronicle wherein like figuring out the powers is like I can move stuff with my mind and that's all I'm gonna talk about for the next ninety minutes, right? Like it's that's that's not the kind of story we wanted to tell. Although I love the movie, movie Chronicle, amazing it's, powers um, no letdowns. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, was, I, kind of right. So I I love the idea. It's, it, there's so many things that we attach self-worth to right now, nowadays, yeah. like in our present day. So I, I loved the idea when I first read the season two script of the dude that could like only cop he could copy anybody's power, which is so overpowered, <laughs> but 5%, which is so small. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know what what I'll find more entertaining though is like him actually doing it, 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 doing these these different powers or like the explanation of <laughs> yeah his power right like how, how how do you even lead with that like is, is he gonna show and then all we get is just a glimmer of like a matchstick lighting <laughs> like it's, it's you know that, what I'm saying that that oh, that's yeah, 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 wait, can't wait for that. Yeah, because it, yeah. it is pretty well it's, done. Yeah, I think it's going to be entertaining, yeah, though, central. because... <laughs> yeah. We know the production team's amazing, so yeah, they're going to handle it greatly. It is it is very... Because I, I, I have a question about that, because that's something that the Season 1 cast was always kind of messing around with, of like, what do you do with your body as an actor to showcase that you're doing a power? Especially... In, in season one, or in your case, bringing Brie Brown to this new season, you haven't seen what it looks like yet. So you just have to do some kind of weird kung fu in front of the camera and hope that we can <laughs> put there... enough effects around it. So like, how was it for how was it for you doing like a whole bunch of different? And on top of that, real quick, is there like a green screen during this, or is it just outside and then they kind of post product it later? As far no, most okay. of the time we didn't have green screen. There was a few times in season one where we did the green screen, but it's more so like we, shoot it and then do it uh, after. And I'm, again, no, that's kind of talking out of my butt here. I don't really. You're talking. You're talking to uh, like-minded it's, folks. It's... <laughs> right. We set. We we shoot the we shoot the scene. We set the frame, and we we know exactly which shot yeah. we're going to do the effects on. And then I'm pretty sure we get like all cast and everything out, and then we take what's called a, a plate shot. So that's like. Just, just like a still video shot of like the the, the, yeah. the frame and then without they anything moving in. Okay, so then they nice. can. <laughs> that I makes think. sense. Joseph, makes I'm sense. sorry if I'm wrong. It's time for a night's answer. Is Joseph now. the ones that brings the cans and the milk crates? Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah. He's the one that he's oh, the one that killed wow. the bat on set. Yeah, because that's he probably does it before he does it before every filming. <laughs> he's just, he's just before every filming, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, sorry to interrupt, but go ahead to that question. <laughs> Uh, no worries. So, how does it feel? A uh, pretty like copying other uh, other like actors' powers. Yeah, like pretty what, much. How did you decide which <laughs> what hand motions you were gonna do if you had to do multiple powers? Like, did you switch it up? <laughs> no, because I don't know how continuity was. But after I did it for the first take, certain powers, uh -huh. I try to keep it as similar as possible for continuity's sake. But if I know, like you know, there's a different like for. Uh, when I was uh, when I was like trying to copy Courtney's powers, I asked her specifically. I'm like, "Hey, what do you do with your fingers? Or how do you do with oh, your hands?" Oh, you know, okay, of, hell yeah. So I I try I try to mimic it that way. And then the ones that we haven't seen yet, I just went crazy. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna do a for wind. I'm just gonna do like a spinny thing. Tornado's yeah, yeah. gonna come out of my hands. It's gonna look so good. I can hear people laughing in the back. You look so stupid, but I'm like, it's impossible. All the <laughs> who who the hell said they're that? fired? Yeah, they're fired. They're fired. No, I'm just, yeah, I'm I agree. Just I agree, Griffin. That was probably they're, the back, the voice in the back of they're my done. head being like, yeah. "Oh my goodness, you're such." <laughs> yeah, but pretty much. I think we just yeah. throws bowling on the set, guys. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my god, no! Pretty much, as soon as like we started the take, I went for it. Completely tried going for it, and no one told me it's wrong. So I no, hopefully that's good. <laughs> yeah. it's all right. That's what you do, right? Like you, you, you take in what you can get and run with it. Talking, talking to the cast, and you, you mm -hmm. take yeah. from it and you kind of mimic it, and that's obviously because that you're doing five percent of their powers. So you do what you got to do. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, at this part of the show, we, we oh. like I was saying uh, off air, we have questions for each of our guests. Scott oh, no. has uh, all lined up. So Scott's going to get we into, have? even though we've been asking questions this entire time, uh, we like to ask just a little off-ball questions. To all all right. Guests. So we, we did because we, we got as far as we got in the show, and we were going to do Would You Rathers in season one. So there's Would You Rathers. When that first scene in the, in the, the casino, not the casino, the... Yes, yeah, so at the casino. You guys remember that? Yeah, at the at the gas station, perfect. or yeah, I think that's what it was. So, would mm. you? All right. First question goes to both of you guys. Would you rather lose your ability to speak, or your ability to hear for your entire life? No, no speak. And I, you go first. Mm. Yes. Who went first? No. no 
most deep in that shit. I know, right? That's a tough one. Actually, I'd no rather speak. not be able to speak. No speak. I agree. I agree. Here, no yeah. speak. Yeah, I, I, which, which is crazy coming from actors. We love to talk, but hearing <laughs> is so much more important. I think. I don't know. I don't know. Me neither. I would. I mean. Oh, so then the other one heightens. Sensory Ooh. So it's like. Ooh, maybe I smell really. Good. Is, yeah. Yeah, probably. You always smell uh, a bit, you know, as in like that. Just your it, smelling. I in knew. General. I knew someone was gonna do it. I didn't well, think of yeah, you and I as you dad father joke. I, I, I was thinking it, but he works trying to get a ring in the oh realms God. with you, so that he had to say that. He had to say that. He had to say I it. Had to that's right. Yeah, that's Everyone right. was thinking. And I watched all. I watched all season one before we started shooting. <laughs> I it. From from the fields. Yeah. From I the was, fields. I was prepared. All right. <laughs> Next one, would you would you rather talk like Yoda or breathe like Darth Vader for the rest of your life? <laughs> you gotta talk backwards. You go first on this one. <laughs> I, I, for sure, I would rather talk like Yoda. If I'm sleeping next to somebody and I breathe like Darth Vader that's the a sleep, whole that's night. That's sleep apnea, for sure, right? Oh. <laughs> and also, you could just treat you have to talk like Yoda is that you can't you can't talk anymore. So you need to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Th that guy also just listens. <laughs> what about you? You know what? I'm gonna... Oh, shit. I'm just to annoy my friends. I'd probably breathe like... <laughs> I'd breathe like Darth. That's okay. Oh, my God. What? I feel like that... You, you don't want to talk backwards? Guy. You don't want to talk backwards? You want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to talk backwards. Sorry, what was that? That's huh? normally what Yoda does, right? You. What about? I what guess, about? Wait. Life. What about life, you when you're you, when you're married and you have a partner? You're gonna you're gonna breathe like Darth Vader the rest of your goddamn separate life. Separate rooms. Separate rooms. Okay. By that time, by that time, I'll just hope there's something separate like rooms. invented that'll help me. You know, like Doc just help me out. You have sleep apnea. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all that's, it was. That's, that speaking of inconsistencies, it's crazy that there's crystal laser swords and they can't fix his respirator. That's nuts. <laughs> that's true. That is so true. <laughs> that's actually so true. Yeah, yeah, not ruined, but made so much sense to the movie. <laughs> there's laser, actual laser beam guns, and they get no. him a freaking inhaler. All right, the next one, which is gonna go good with you, Griffin, because you made mention to a rat tail. Would you rather? <laughs> Would you rather ever have a mullet haircut or a ponytail haircut the rest of your life? You had to rock a mullet or a ponytail. I've had both. I like them both, so. Ooh. I I think I do yeah? mullet. Why? What's wrong? So. Okay, what's I wrong with the rat there tail? Is a... Both of you guys. It's well, right, that's the other thing is I know that I can't cut like, rock a <laughs> rat tail slash ponytail. You now. can, you, there's, but there's I also nothing think there's stopping like, you. Still... <laughs> no, there's, you I think technically there's like, still can. can. There's still like a party, there's like a party stigma kind of still around a mullet. That guy like, parties. That guy, that guy either sucks or he rules. He's got a story. You know I mean? That guy has a story. The rat tail's like, oh man, he's yeah. poor or something, right? Like, you. That guy, that guy, should we give him gas money? Whoa, whoa, save <laughs> some for the rest. That's right. Is he okay? Yeah. True. Because I was also wondering, with the mullet, could you, like, yeah. style your hair? Yeah, you could, yeah, no, the mullet, right, the, mullet, the, the mullet, mullet's right, but good. Can, so. Rat tail's good. You could do the front, whatever. It's a party, right? The party, the front? Mm -hmm. Or is the party, the back? I guess yeah. that's normally how it goes, right? But yeah, business is in the front. In the front. I guess it doesn't business, have to be. Business in the front. Right, so... Be. Very technically, I could have a mullet you right could. now, and you no could. one would know. So That's can true. I. Exactly. Ah, mullet, mullet, mullet. For sure. Lock it in. But you can still have a rat tail, and no one knows. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's, it's <laughs> and like I do. Your, in your shirt. I I would tuck it on my shirt <laughs> and, and just because <laughs> no one knows, right? You tuck it in the shirt, and just roll. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, next one, last one. Would you rather know all the world's secrets? Or live in like the ignorancy of thinking there's nothing crazy in the world. That's a deep Jesus. one. Ooh. Is 
are actually tough. He's a tough would you, yeah, would you live, you live like where you put Mountain Dew all over the no crops? <laughs> sorry, everyone. Sorry, guys. Stop the <laughs> podcast for a second. What did Scott just say? <laughs> Mark said idiocracy. So I was saying Mountain Dew, you, or was that Gatorade? I think it was Gatorade, right? Gatorade. So you spray, you it was spray Gatorade that they put on the all crops. over the crops. You guys have never seen idiocracy. Such a great film movie. Oh Mountain Dew is a different true. drink from Gatorade. It probably, it probably a, would do it better. Compared it would to do it better. <laughs> Mountain Dew Code Red on my Snap. Piece. You're going to grow so strong. So strong. <laughs> okay, and I had taken this one first. Know all the secrets. Basically, like you're a president. Like you're a president, <laughs> probably, right? You're either a president or you're just uh, a normal... Yeah. I'm just going to roll with the whatever they tell us. Ah, uh, instead of saying that ignorance is bliss, that's just, yeah. that just keeps coming to my mind right now. No. <laughs> but to be fair though, like if you if you don't know anything, all right, all screw right. that. I'd be the president. You rather you rather know, right? <laughs> I'd rather be the president. That's only, that's only so half. It is half right. right. It is half right. <laughs> <laughs> I like grasping on. I like I grasping on to the metaphor of an answer. You'd be like the president. Oh, okay. I'll be the president. I didn't know that was the, that was a choice. See, I, see, I can feed the answer. I guess. Right. Yeah. It works. Oh my god. Wow. Uh, that's no. Yeah. That is but, tough. Oh, that's Griffin, tough. What it's would tough. you do? Yes. I. Oh God. It's tough. It's tough. I. Because I. Because if you're gonna say that we know, ev like everything, every actually everything. Then you almost have a duty to choose that, right? If you can know everything but and maybe see, find see a way through stuff, you can do both. Mm -hmm. Know everything and act like you know nothing. <laughs> so that's a win-win, right? <laughs> right. You know it all, but you you'd slip up. You would hope have so. to slip up you at some point. So. Like be like, oh man, this Russian, this Russian yep. Ukraine thing is crazy. I, I don't know what to do about it. And then all of a sudden you'd be like, oh well, There's... they should just, and then like lay out a plan, and they go, wait a minute, those tunnels go underneath Russia. I wait, yes. what? I think. Sound. Oh man, I would be happier <laughs> okay. being dumb. But if I could that's, know everything, <laughs> maybe maybe we could figure that's some nice. things out. Yeah, you could. You could know stuff. Exactly. You know everything. 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 So everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, then you, oh. and, 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 and then if you're, you're like an Elon, one, though, too, like, if you're that smart, you if you're like, because you yeah. know, those really super smart people, that's kind of what this goes into, too, is you have those people that are really smart, and it's hard to talk to any for, any of us, right? <laughs> they're, they're too hard to yeah. hold a conversation with because they're so darn smart. And it's gonna, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, like I'd live, I'd live in a bunker. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure if I knew everything. Like it's, but that's and see, that's like where the president thing starts to fall away, right? Like you know everything about your country, but the problem is you don't know everything else about the other ones, and that's, that's where true. it starts to get scary. But if I knew everything, everything, I know where the the, the leader of Australia keeps his freaking drawers for sure. Then you'd rule the world. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> For, pretty much. Oh, I don't Does know. Does Australia have a know. leader? Isn't that a I don't know. I don't know world Griffin. events. But, but if you took that approach where you went to go rule the world and you knew everything, oh you then well, no, you can't. You can't tell. Right. You can't tell right. futures. You, you're not that oh, smart. Yeah, yeah, Maybe. Yeah, yeah right. you, you don't know facts. everything. If like I know. Oh, like yep. Yeah, that, yeah, that's where his gun is. God. But would you know enough that you could put facts together to, oh, to, maybe. to know what the end result is? Right, so that's okay. So that's another addendum I have to this question. Is do we know everything that has been known? Or that, can't, like, do we still have to experiment can't with see things the future. to find things out? Right, so you can't... Yeah, okay, you can't see the future. Different. But you hmm. know... You know war... You know everything else going back. Right? Everything so you can say, alright, I know what war point. strategy is. I know what... Russia and Ukraine's gonna do, and I can see where things are gonna right. play. I know this guy, mm. like I know okay. Putin and whoever the Ukraine is, because I don't know world events. So I know these guys, and I can put things together. And, see, and what if, what if your conspiracy theorist friend is right, and and there was a whole civilization before this one, and there was aliens? You probably would. would. You know that? Because that's before that's before us. Oh my god, that's a whole nother. That's oh, okay. You found I, the Easter I egg. Know, I, I All would right, choose that two, option. Two points just for to that. you. You found the Easter egg. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I would know just for that. All just right. to be like, yeah, the okay, here's the here, truth about, so let's everything. say, the pyramids, <laughs> Jesus, dead dinosaurs, here's yeah, everything. That's, yeah. Yeah, I, actually, I'd be into that. I like that. Perfect. <laughs> I, I nice. think it's slow. All right, good job. I get to find out about yes. Jesus, so yes. Yeah, you probably... He's like, oh, yeah. He's my, yeah, my cool. pal, actually. Oh, we played water polo. Because <laughs> we're friends. <laughs> like you lived other people's lives with the knowledge. Oh, GG, what's like, up, crazy. man? Crazy miracle you did this week. <laughs> Jezu. Nice, then they would think bro. you're crazy because that sounds like you're tweeting about it. And he'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus is good at water polo. Yeah. What? <laughs> you're, what? You're banned. Yeah. No, no, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus did a yeah, social media cleanse. Yeah, that's true. You know that's it, true. I know it. Come on. <laughs> well, uh, on that note, uh, I, I greatly appreciate that you both uh, took the time to come on the show. Uh, this was an Mine amazing well. conversation, at least on my end. If you could, just tell us where we can find you guys, if you have any other projects you want to boast about, and then uh, from there, we're, we're wrapping it up. Okay, guys. Yeah, thank you for having me, by the way. And you guys can find me on uh, Instagram at Inayat Ahmadi and uh, other projects. Crazy short short film festival that we're filming next week. It's gonna come out in May, so check that out on Crazy Eights. I'll pass it over to Griffin. You got the ball. Dude, the Crazy Eights films turn out really, really well. You definitely gotta check those out. Uh, you can find anything you want about Abracadavers by searching up Abracadavers. I can't imagine that. Oh, there is a song, but we're at, at Abracadavers or on Twitter at Abracadavers uh, Web, or you can go to Abracadavers.tv. You can find me every, anywhere at Griffin Cork. Um, I think that's my handle on everything. And I'm, oh, I'm starting on a feature in a few weeks, no, days, a week from now, called Markings Ooh. of Murder. That should be releasing sometime next year with High Octane Pictures. So that, keep an eye out for that. I have a kid in oh, it. Oh, wow. That's new for me. Hmm. <laughs> get into that. You, you, <laughs> now that goes, you get back. <laughs> now that, He's, now that goes, a reason why you get out. Out. This has been the Amigos PC. Make sure to like, subscribe, and review us on all your podcasting platforms. And visit us at AmigosPC.net. Get our entire library of content and Amigos merch. Till next time, adios.